Within Western Australia, there are a number of geologic oddities owing to much of the host rock being 2 to 3 billion years in age. This includes bright red banded iron formations, some of which even have the gemstone tiger's eye interspersed with them and what is known as tiger iron. The area also has a cluster of one of the planet's oldest living organisms called stromatolites. These mounds are indeed alive and consist of layers of cyanobacteria. Because of the general old age of the rock, Western Australia has a number of very large impact craters. However, it also has a number of more recent craters which formed in the last 200,000 years. One of these craters was not discovered until 2007 when Dr. Arthur Hickman discovered a circular depression in the ground while browsing Google Earth. After a short drill program was done, this structure was confirmed as a very young impact crater. Now known as Hickman Crater, this feature measures 260 meters wide and 10 meters deep. Despite its highly eroded appearance, it is one of the nation's youngest impact structures. We now know that this crater has an age of between 10,000 and 100,000 years old. A more recent dating attempt pinned an age of 50,000 years, although it used a methodology which had a high margin of error, meaning that this crater is somewhere in the 50,000 to 100,000 year old range. This video will assume that the figure of 50,000 years old is the crater's true age. Approximately 50,000 years ago, a small mass of rock was on a collision course with Earth. The asteroid in question was approximately 11 meters or 36 feet wide and represented a segment of rock which originated from the core of a much larger asteroid. It was unusually dense, consisting of mainly iron and nickel, but also with elevated levels of platinum and iridium. Although exactly where this asteroid first formed is unknown, its unusually slow impact speed suggested an origin in the inner asteroid belt. As this asteroid made its final approach towards the planet, it began to further accelerate due to the pull of Earth's gravity. Accelerating to 11 kilometers per second, or 25,000 miles per hour, it entered the upper atmosphere. Due to its small size, it began to burn up. However, due to its composition, it did not immediately fragment. Instead, it remained relatively intact until it impacted the ground in a remote section of Australia at an angle of 45 degrees. This impact occurred heading in the southwest direction, generating a powerful explosion equivalent in energy to the detonation of 10 kilotons of TNT. This quickly vaporized the impact site and generated a powerful shockwave which expanded outwards in all directions. Any creatures within a 750 meter radius would have been instantly wiped out due to the wind speed exceeding 800 kilometers per hour. However, as this blast wave continued, it quickly lost energy. Any trees present within a 2200 meter radius are flattened, while at 3500 meters distant from the impact site only moderate tree damage occurred. At a distance of 10 kilometers, this impact would have been relatively safe to view as you would have experienced only an 18 km per hour shockwave. This impact generated a magnitude 3.3 earthquake and generated a sound loud enough to be heard within a 500 km radius. Fragments of the iron meteorite were largely dispersed over a 10 square kilometer area near the crater, although some fragments may have been flung even further during the impact towards the southwest. Today, this area can be accessed via a series of dirt roads, although third-party access needs to be first granted from those who own mining claims in the vicinity. Since the crater has a bowl-like shape, whatever minimal rainfall the area received pools there for extended periods of time, allowing for an increased level of vegetation within the crater. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank my new patron Brian Wolgamuth for supporting this channel.